What a week it's been. Tonight is Black Eye Friday, traditionally the night when the big piss-up before Christmas descends into violence. Yes. <laughs> it's the night where you can watch girls on the pavement trying to snog the paramedic while still wearing the oxygen mask from the life support machine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the pubs are bloody crowded, aren't they? Last year, I had to pre-book a two-minute slot at the Uranus at the Fox and Furky. <laughs> Did you see the show where Nigel Farage met the posh couple Dom and Steph from Gogglebox? How pissed did they get? <laughs> By the end of the show, I was expecting to see Dom and Nigel holding hands on the sofa, weeping at the telly. <laughs> I'm not sure Farage is up to a job as big as running the country. Couldn't we start him with running a small off-licence to see how it goes? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> sure, yeah. All I know is what my nan told me. Never trust a man with a smile like a broken zip. <laughs> it isn't it? It is. At one point, Farage spilt champagne down his trousers. Shame he wasn't wearing his cords. They have natural guttering, so you can catch it in your shoes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want Farage ruining shows like Gogglebox. Are you the same? Yeah. At least make it a swap and have the boy who never speaks running UKIP for a bit. <laughs> and finally, Ben Haynow won the X Factor. <laughs> Ben looked so shocked, but then that might have been that he just remembered he's left his van on a double yellow for the last three months. <laughs> oh, my God, I can't believe it's happened to me. <laughs> Dermot kicked off the show, dangling from wires above the audience. For one horrible moment, I thought it was a Christmas thing and the crowd were meant to kiss under the missile bulge. <laughs> I think they're the same wires they used to help Simon wink. Every act, when it? Louis was going, pick up the phone, pick up the phone. <laughs> when it? I think he was on commission. <laughs> I was half expecting to ask if we'd been missold PPI as well. <laughs> Did you see Ronnie Wood performing with One Direction? Yeah. Gaunt. <laughs> he looked like Rod Stewart had fallen into one of those vacuum pack machines they use on MasterChef. <laughs> Fleur showed off some powerful thighs in those dance routines, didn't she? Did you see her? Bloody <laughs> hell, there'll be no uncracked Brazil nuts in the East household this week. <laughs> what a lineup we have for you tonight. Whether as a bomb girl in a quantum of solace or a trade unionist in Made in Dagenham, one thing's for sure, she's always one of the most striking actresses out there. Yes, the brilliant Gemma Arterton will be joining on Miss Hofer. <laughs> I'll be talking to a star of the biggest sitcom on the box and the man behind the potty mouth pensioner who can even make my nan blush. That's right, Mrs Brown himself. Brendan O'Carroll will be dropping by later. <laughs> and the brilliant Tom O'Dell will be performing live right here later. <laughs> but first, he's the comedy giant who's welcome to slide down my beanstalk any time he likes. <laughs> From Cuckoo, the in-betweeners and man down. It's a brilliant. Greg Davies! <laughs> The big stuff, cos you're tall. And... and fat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, look. Oh, that is bad. Three and a half stone overweight, officially. No! Yeah, the doctor told me. What an arsehole. Why would you yeah. say that to someone? You wouldn't what believe you... it, though, would you? Oh. Get <laughs> fucked. <laughs> well, come on, let's have fun. You've got bloody Christmas coming up now. You know it's going to get slim over Christmas. Yeah, come on, let's have it. Oh, God. Right, what do you want, my love? Do you drink? I do drink. I'm not very good at it anymore because of my advancing years, but let's do it. How old are you? 38. Next year, over. Don't muck about. What do you mean? It is. 38. <laughs> Th 39 years of age, I went, to, I went to the doctor, the same one who said I was fat, and said, there's something wrong with me, I can't drink anymore, a couple of drinks and I'm drunk, and he goes, that's it, you've, you've crossed the line. Really? <laughs> oh, my God, I can't believe it. I'm not, but I'm, but I'm ready. Let's do it. Do you want some Elise? I'm just a cheap date. 
Oh, I, well, I can't believe why have you coming on with all this bad news? <laughs> you basically said you're a cardiac arrest waiting to happen and you can't drink anymore. I mean, my God. <laughs> How did you cope at the comedy awards then? Because that is hardcore. Yeah, I stayed off the booze. If, uh, what's this? How strong's this? I don't bloody know. <laughs> We're going to neck it. No, you must be joking. No, 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 no. <laughs> Maybe not. Come on, then, neck it. <laughs> Come on, neck it. What is it? <laughs> that is vile. That's That's vile. That is vile. What is in this shit? <laughs> French cognac. Exotic juices, French. my ass, uh, my uh. <laughs> That's a classy drink. Yeah. yeah. Anything that's mixed with brandy. Yeah. Pink grapefruit and mango. It's disgusting. It's just sitting there and you're not even drinking it. That no, is instant heartburn. Cheers. You know what? People don't realise, do they, about the comedy wars? They don't feed you there. They give you all these bloody bottles of wine and vodka, and all you yeah. give is like a Jacob's cream cracker, and then they wonder when you go to get an award. That is. Like, <laughs> <laughs> showing himself up. But you don't get anything to eat, do you? you Nothing to line your stomach. It's a lot of crisps. I got through a lot of crisps. Yeah, because you know what? You know, last time I was on, you know, I tried to get off with Nicole Scherzinger. Did you? Yeah, I was so drunk. That's, <laughs> That's weird, because I've heard. Mm. What? Is I've there just, a rumour? I've heard now? these rumours that you're gay, no? What? <laughs> Who's spreading this rumour? <laughs> if I find out who did it, I'll knock their block off. <laughs> My missus is going to be fuming. <laughs> <laughs> now, we've got to talk about Man Down. Yeah, of course the we have. The first series has just come out on DVD. Yeah. You play Dan, a teacher who moves back in with his mum and dad after his girlfriend dumps him. Yeah. He's a bit of a twat, isn't he? Oh, he's a total twat, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now, the late, great Rick Mel played your dad. He was one of your yeah. comedy heroes. What was it like working with him? It was amazing working with him, yeah. Because I, um, I, I've sort of morphed into looking a bit like him as I've got older. So you, Yeah, yeah you so it was always a joke when we yeah, were, I yeah. was writing it and we were putting it together. We were always saying, obviously, Rick Mel will play my dad, even though he was only ten years older than me. And uh, I never thought he'd say yes, but he did, yeah. Oh. It was wicked. Yeah. Can I walked into a room, he's my comedy hero, and I walked into yeah. a room and I was shitting myself and he put his arms around me and he went, Comrade. Oh, that's nice, isn't, isn't it? Because he's a real bastard to you in the show, isn't he? Yeah. How much of the character is based on your own dad? A lot of it. But... But, <laughs> <laughs> but, but I sort of took... I took the part of my dad that used to love attacking me. <laughs> there were, there was what do love, you mean? What do you there, mean? There was loving stuff as well, you know. I just took all the bad stuff. But there's, like, there's a scene in the show where Rick takes me to... Well, my dad in the show takes me to the house of his first love. Mm. And, uh, and he describes very poetically how he used to woo this woman. Yeah. And then at the end of the... I don't know if you've seen the scene, but at the end of the scene he goes... Um, Anyway, all's well ends well. I fucked her against this wall. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then my dad just did that to me. He just, he no. just did it. It was just genuine. Is he a practical yeah. joker then? Yeah, your dad? totally. Yeah. Oh, my dad's a bit like that. Someone got revenge on my dad, yeah. You know those fart machines? Yeah. He put a sensor, someone slipped a sensor in his pocket, yeah. So, you know, like a Wi Fi fart machine. And when they pressed the button and they were at a Chinese restaurant, and his friend bent down to smell the thing. And my dad pressed the buttons and went... <laughs> my dad was laughing so much, he stopped breathing and collapsed <laughs> on the table. <laughs> so what, was your mum nicer to you? Cos your dad used to pick on my you. My mum was lovely. Yeah, my dad was lovely as well, but yeah. he just... I went to him once, when I was a young man, because I thought that my, um, testicles were moving. <laughs> moving? What do you mean? On their own. <laughs> moving on their own? What, like, like a phantom bull? <laughs> Both of them, just there was some slight movement in, in them. Are they meant to move? Yeah, if you control it, but I wasn't controlling it. Oh my god, that must be so weird. Right. And I was like 12, and I went to him and I was genuinely worried, and uh, I plucked up courage over a week to tell him. Most dads would have been sympathetic, Alan. He, uh, for five years, called me alien bollocks. <laughs> That is hard. <laughs> so he was very kind. Yeah, at, at yeah, other times. yeah. Now the Man Down Christmas special. Yeah. What have you done about Rick Mail? That's what I want to know. Well, you should probably just watch, but we haven't tried to replace him. You can't. Yet. He's it's, irreplaceable. It's impossible. So, so no, the the character's gone. 
Yeah. Now let's have a look at a clip. This is Greg having a tear up with a turkey in the Man Down Christmas special. <laughs> in Man Down, you were a teacher before you got into comedy. Yeah. Were you as crap at it as he is? As Man Down? Yes, yeah. easily as crap. What kind of a teacher were you, though? Were you one that... <laughs> Do you know what? I met an ex-pupil, a really lovely ex-pupil, about three weeks ago, and we were having a really nice chat. She was being really sweet, and she went, oh, do you know what, sir? It took me... They still call me sir. They're all in their 30s. <laughs> so it took me about... Two years, and I was looking through some photos, and I saw a picture of you, and I thought, oh, God, he was fucking shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, so what were you like, though? Was you, one, was you a cool one? Hey, kids, what are you doing? Let's go. Or was you just really nervous and sweaty? And all? What were you like? No, I wasn't. I was, I was strict enough not to have my life ruined. Yeah. Yeah, but I don't think, you know... Do you, do you have that voice, that teacher voice? What are you doing? Go on, do it to me, do it to me. <gasps> oh, no. <laughs> it's more the look. I took... Yeah, I learnt this off an old Welsh woman, the look. Yeah, that was scary, yeah, yeah. The secret is to maintain it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is scary. Oh, no, that, that is scary. <laughs> and, yeah, powerfully erotic. Yes. <laughs> I think one of my balls started moving around. Because, <laughs> 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 um, to me, obviously... You were drawn to comedy, as you were, but when you were teaching, did any of the kids do anything, like, funny, but you had to be, like, quite down with it? You know, cos sometimes if you made the teacher smirk, it was a kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, yes. But generally, I was so bitter, I was able not to laugh at them. Oh, God, so you were really, but like, twisted. A kid really got me once when he was 20 minutes late to my yeah, lesson, yeah. and I was had a face like thunder, and I went... I gave him the full look, I gave him the full... Where the hell have you been? He went, oh, I'm sorry, sir, I've been uh, living la vida loca. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough, isn't it? Yeah. Fair yeah. enough. Yeah. Okay. Would you have a supply teacher? Do you have a supply teacher oh, that asked no. for your name? You know, Poor like, bastards. Pull my cock and all that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> coo do coo, and they're yeah. writing them down. They don't realise it. Like, <laughs> we, we had a supply teacher in one of the schools I, I taught mm. in, and the, they gave her hell all, all day. And in the last lesson, she was covering a French lesson next to my class. And at the end of the day, she went, this kid was giving her grief, and she went, oh, shut up, you twat. <laughs> <laughs> Someone else in the class went, <gasps> uh, whole class went, you can't do that. She goes, yes, I can, because he is a twat. <laughs> <laughs> You're all twats. <laughs> and she backed out of the classroom and drove Respect. off. Respect. <laughs> amazing. That's amazing. Awesome. You know, cos I, I worked in a call centre before I got into comedy, and it does teach you stuff, because, you know, you can chat to people. Yeah. What teaching thing came in Andy when you were doing your stand-up? I don't think there's much of a transference because with teaching you can threaten them and ring their parents and stuff and you can't do that. But I think I made that mistake when I first started doing stand-up of thinking I could go, excuse me, you're talking, I'm trying to... Come in, come in. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you have to find different skills, but, oh. you know. Do you ever use your heckles, like, on your class? Like, yeah, I didn't mark your homework because I was shagging your mum. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I used to drink yeah. more literature. I used to have actual sex with their mums. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> what a parents' evening that was. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for coming on, Greg. Oh, thanks for having me. I think it's lovely, yeah. And Man Down's on December 23rd, 10, 10 o'clock. And, and I'm also in the Christmas special of Cuckoo on Christmas Eve. Oh, OK. What time's that on? Don't know. Don't know. Stop being lazy. Get radio times. We can't do Look everything. Greg Davis, everyone. <laughs> This is Brown's voice star, Brendan O'Carroll. And Tom O'Dell will be here. I'll see you in part two. <laughs> Welcome back. Mr.
Mrs Brown's boys star Brendan O'Carroll and Tom O'Dell will be here soon. First, though, give it up for the Cockney Sparrow, who's bringing the East End to the West End in Made in Dagenham. Give it up for the brilliant Gemma Arterton! <laughs> <laughs> right, let me get you a drink, love. Oh, you're tempting me now, but I, I don't drink at the moment, Alan. I've got to look after my voice. Because <laughs> you're in a musical. Yeah. Made in Dagenham. Yes, right. Will and it I... really damage your instrument? Well, I, I've heard, yeah. I mean, I can have the odd one on a Saturday night. But you can't go crazy. I can't go crazy. Because I sing better when I'm pissed. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, someone commented once on my Ness and Dorma in a toilet. Honestly, because I was like, oh, Ness and Dorma. <laughs> I think it was spot on. Um, <laughs> so let, let me get you like a, do you want like a Diet Coke? Do you know what I'd love if you've got it? A ginger, ginger beer. Gin oh, look, a, is that a huge... No, that's a bit of lemon. Bit of lemon. Oh, go on, that'll be all right. Are you sure? Yeah, that'll be... Ginger beer. Oh, let me get your hey, ginger that's beer. That's okay, I was coming. I know, I know. There you that's go. That's it, perfect. <laughs> usually, usually, I'd put a little bit of vodka in there, but... Um, Yo, yeah, you're not. You're being professional, being a good Gemma, girl. and I respect you for that. Cheers. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Now, how do you keep your voice in shape? Is there, like, vocal exercises you need to do? Yeah, you have to... <laughs> I, now I've developed a tick, which is I wake up in the morning and go, <laughs> just to see if I can sing. And I do it all day long and people What's know. That? But this one's a good one. <laughs> How do you make that noise? You have to sort of... Sounds... <laughs> do that. You can do it, come on. Yeah, look, you can do it. <laughs> A load of stray dogs just turned up at the back door. <laughs> Gabby? <laughs> yeah. And then you buzz your lips while you're doing it. <laughs> it's uncanny, it really is. <laughs> so what the hell does that do, though? It, it lifts your larynx up. All right. And it warms up the top part of your register. Oh, my God. There you go. Now, I went to see you in Made in Dagenham, yeah, and it genuinely was brilliant. I loved it. Thank you. I really did. And you do, you sing all the way through. And you act, you're never really off the stage, are you, to be honest? No. But I have got a bone to pick with you. Oh. You gave me nearly a bloody heart attack. <laughs> I'm there sitting there. All of a sudden, I hear this shouting behind me, equal pay for women. <laughs> I'm thinking, oh, my God, here we go. Some militant nut job into that storm. <laughs> <laughs> But it was you. It was me. What was you doing there? Was you just checking I turned up? <gasps> you know, I, I have to say, Alan, I didn't even know you were in, but you just happened to be in, were you in front of me, behind yeah, yeah. me. Yeah, I was like, there and... hey, you go, pie. I was like, <laughs> 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 I was there, I was tugging on you, just going, Gemma, you want a chat, man? All right, all right, Gemma. No, no, I didn't know. <laughs> I'd love it if somebody did that. Now I've asked for it, people are going to do it. But I see people look around, they get all excited when you're in the audience, because I go into the audience at the show. <laughs> you do that, don't <laughs> well, you? Well, people yeah. know, and, and now people know that I stop at a certain place, so you get, like, the weird ones sitting oh, in right, those Gemma. seats. <laughs> yeah. Is it a certain older man? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you ever think of carrying some mace? That'd be great. Made in <laughs> Dagenham, <laughs> back off! <laughs> <laughs> You should do that. I've got a handbag all the time, so I can hide it. Yeah, pop a taser in there. Yeah. Da, 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 da. <laughs> I love you, Gemma. <laughs> <laughs> Tell the people that oh, what, what's the show about for anyone who's missed it who didn't see the film. It's about it's a it's based on a true story about the women of Full Dagenham who went on strike in 1968, and they won equal. They got the Equal Pay Act started. And I play Rita, who's a fictional character, but she is a working mum that sort of leads the strike. Now, is it true you went to Parliament to campaign for equal rights for women? I did. I went to Parliament. I was invited, um, along with some of the original ladies from Dagenham that went on strike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
because there was an, an act that was passed. Um, um, and so it was amazing, actually. I mean, for me, I, I felt a bit like, you know, they were the legends and I was t tagging along with them. Um, but it was amazing. I've always wanted to go to Parliament and it was great to... to and we got the, uh, the act part. The act was Oh, passed. wonderful. What, what was the thing? How many to keep for and it, against? It was unanimous. I think it... I might be wrong here. It was something like 258 for and, yeah. and like eight against or something like eight that. Eight people still in this day and age said they don't want women to be... That's worrying, isn't it? Even just for eight people. Yeah. I mean, it's the 90s, isn't it? Get with it. <laughs> <laughs> what was it like in Parliament? It was cold. Oh. Yeah, I, it's huge. It's it's much. It's very cavernous. You know the the, the great hall and everything. it's so old, obviously. So it's all stone and yeah. wood. It's quite cold. They should sort the heating out. But no, <laughs> it was great. I wish I could have sort of explored a little bit further yeah. and sort of gone off track and nosed around a bit. But it's beautiful inside. So why did you sign up for it then? Because you're like this film star. Then you're doing like this musical. Why? Was it the story? Was it the character? Yeah, what? it was the story and. I've, I did always want to do a musical. I wanted to do something that nobody else had done before better than me. So I. Oh, it's all <laughs> the about fact you. that it was Lovely. a new musical. <laughs> yeah, all about me. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, but it is the story that I love the most. Yeah. And um, it's, I was quite scared. I mean, singing in front of a massive audience when you're not a singer really is quite a. Oh, scary thing to do, but I love it. It's great And it's fun. proper singing. It ain't like Les Mears when they just talk like that. And I <laughs> drink my ginger beer. Yeah, you oh. know. Yes. Yes, I like your shoes. Thank you. <laughs> that was lovely. <laughs> You also sang opera when you were younger, didn't you? Yeah, I have sung. I, I, when I trained as a... Well, I trained when I was at drama school. I trained as a singer, but it was more classical. So then I ended up doing a bit of opera, and I've sung opera styles before in other shows. But actually... How can you sing opera? Don't you have to be, like, morbidly obese to sing opera? <laughs> <laughs> no, don't you? You never see a skinny opera singer, do you? Yeah, it, it, yeah, it's true. Yeah. <laughs> You don't know. I've never seen a skinny one. Maybe just if, if you want to be if you want to be fat and you want people to accept it, just be an opera singer. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, that's what I'm. Then you can say, hey, look, don't tell me to lose weight. I'm an opera singer. Hello, I'm obese. I found a bit of pizza <laughs> under my tit. Leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> now, how do you keep your hand in with the singing? Are you one of those ones that oh, I'm so shy, and then when the karaoke comes out, Ace of Spades, Ace of Spades. <laughs> yeah, I'm known for it. Yeah, I love yeah. karaoke. What's your favourite song? I do like singing a bit of Total Eclipse of the Heart. I know it's a bit cheesy, but you've got to, because you yeah. it's got a few key key changes and you can rock out. Yeah, that's and good, And you can yeah. be sentimental and mean it and act it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, let's take a look at a clip. This is Gemma and the rest of the cast singing their little Cockney art tale <laughs> in the brilliant Made in Dagenham. <laughs> a cockney accent on stage because it's like an endangered species you don't hear it anymore I do know, you it's don't dying hear out cockney, do you? it's dying out yeah. it's a shame because i think it's such a great accent and it's got so much history i love all the cockney rhyming slang and everything even my accent it used to be like your accent <laughs> <laughs> you used to sound like me yeah you used to sound like you, darling <laughs> back in the day before i was trained i used to yeah and they knocked it out. Well, that problem, that apples and pears, go blow oh, yeah. Get up those apples and pears, yeah, yeah. yeah. Have you ever heard get a pig's ear out of the tower? No, what's that? <laughs> what, what? Get a pig's ear out of the what? Get a pig's ear out the tower. What's that? Get a pig's ear, yeah. beer, out the tower bridge. Fridge! Oh, <laughs> did you know this? <laughs> this, is, this is very 
you know, you have to go yeah. deep into the Cockney rhyming slang to know that stuff. Yeah. But my dad, my dad speaks in Cockney rhyming slang every now and again. Yeah. Actually, I go home and I, and I go, I go proper like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, shut up! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get some water. Because <laughs> my mum's like that when she meets up. Because my mum's a Cockney when she meets up with all her family at Christmas. Oh my God! It's like birds yeah. of a feather. Shut up, you can. <laughs> <laughs> A little bit more cockney, having a cockney off. Shut up! I love that. Cow, cow in cockney is the yeah. best word to say. You care. Uh, yeah, it, it you care. <laughs> <laughs> it lasts forever, do you? Yeah. Care. care. You, go out, you go out the room, you come back, they're still going, care. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to get it into the show. We don't, I don't say care. care. I say nah. Yeah, nah. Not yeah. care. You know, when you're not doing a matinee, yeah. what do you do all day? Because you're not working till half seven. Oh, I what get... Do do? I do stuff. No, I've, I've, um, I've got my own little production company, so I'm doing meetings for that, read scripts, go for a walk, do a bit of Pilates, oh. see friends, sleep often. This show is... The thing is, as you're saying that, you're fluctuating between... You know, it's between Cockney and Posh. <laughs> oh, Sorry, my old. life. Pilates, meet a friend. <laughs> it's just fun. It's, it's, that's what it's like. That's my life. That's my... That you're is like a my Cockney accent. trapped in a posh woman's body. Yeah. <laughs> help, help, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Well, good luck with it, because it's bloody brilliant. Absolutely love it. You've got to go and see Made in Dagenham. It's fantastic. Give it up for Gemma Arden, everyone! <laughs> Thanks, love. Yeah. This is Brown's voice star, Brendan O'Carroll. And Tom O'Dell will be here. I'll see you in part three. <laughs>be performing later. First, so it's not often I want to say the words, why don't you slip out of your dress and join me on the sofa? But right now, I'm prepared to make an exception from the brilliant Mrs Brown's boys. Give it up for the one, the only, Brendan O'Carroll! Yeah. And have you come straight from home base? <laughs> <laughs> Easy chip. <laughs> Easy chip. <laughs> you won't get knocked down on the way home, will you? No, yeah. that's in case the car breaks down. <laughs> <laughs> right, what the fuck can I get you to drink, love? Hey, what have you got? You do. Oh, my, we've got Lambrini. Do you want Lambrini? Oh, no. So what's this? No, no, no. Less. Baby Sham, do you like Baby Sham? No, nah, so it's just some, it's something exotic. Oh, um. Blue Nun. <laughs> no, you're okay. You've What's changed. That? Sours, toffee apple. Oh, give it to me. Yeah, that sounds oh, nice. Give it to me and mm. make me cry. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, there you go, love you. And I'll pour it here for you. Thank you so the much. First time on Chatty Man, isn't it? My first time. I'm yeah. looking forward to it. Oh, oh, it goes with your outfit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember saying fucking stop. <laughs> Hello. Hello, lovely. That's nice. Oh, there's a nice kick in it as well. Yeah, no, it's good. Cheers. Cheers, everyone. Cheers. Cheers. Now, what a year you've had. Yeah, I've been amazing. What a year. Biggest sitcom on telly. DVD sold millions. You've had a film out. You've written a book. Yes. Basically, your own Wikipedia, isn't it? Yes, it's Wikipedia. <laughs> <laughs> Now, how factually accurate is the information in this book? Oh, completely, un <laughs> really? completely inaccurate. <laughs> really? Completely. But any of that, and if you find anything accurate in that show, bingo, because there's nothing accurate in it whatsoever. <laughs> uh, and the whole idea of it was to just give a, a kind of a Mrs. Brown's Wikipedia version of everything uh, yeah. in like We did one last year called uh, Mrs. Brown's Family Handbook. And basically, it was how to rare and make sure that your family is dysfunctional, because it's important that your family is dysfunctional. Oh, yeah, yeah. You don't want to come from an ordinary family. No. So, uh, and it sold really, really well. And, and, you know, I know a bandwagon when I see one. <laughs> <laughs> and to top it all, the other night, you won the Writers Guild at the Comedy Awards. Yes, yes. You must be well chuffed. Thank you. Brilliant. So what did you do about your speech? Did you write one or did you just wing it? I winged it. Um, uh, the Comedy Awards. You've been to the Comedy Awards. Have I been to the Comedy Awards? Yeah, but I can't bloody remember it. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm saying to Greg, they don't give you any food. You go up there, get an award, and you're talking like him from Wolf for Wall Street on Kalu. <laughs> 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 It's a very... <laughs> it is a very... True. Well, they didn't give us nibbles. They, we got nibbles. Oh, give, they didn't yeah. give you Haribo. Uh, no, Haribo, we got Haribo. Yeah. Plenty of drinks. And there is a little bit of a... Uh, hello. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You're up next. Oh, well, it was nice. <laughs> um, but it was, uh, it, was, it was a lovely night, and it was, it, was, it was weird because I wasn't expecting anything. We weren't nominated in any category. Oh, so no-one did the old, I think you might get us... No, no. And, and there was a nice man at the table next door to us, and every time... Uh, Every time one of the categories would come up to it, they say, Best actor in a comedy, he'd tap me in the arm and go, Good luck. And I go, uh, I'm, not, I'm not up for this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so then, Best you come, Good luck. No, I'm not up for this. Will you <laughs> fuck off and leave me alone? <laughs> Keep yeah. reminding me, I'm not up for it. <laughs> so it was, it, was, uh, it was really weird. And then Adam Woody came out, um, Ian Beale from, from East Enders, and he, he said he was making the um, Writers Guild of Guy Britain Award, and he started talking about this, you know, the writer who'd won it, and I'm going, oh, I like this guy, whoever he is. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sounds like a nice guy. Sounds like a stud. <laughs> <laughs> and then he said, Brendan O'Carroll, and it was actually took the wind out of my sails. It was, it was, so I had nothing prepared, and I just got up and oh. spoke from my heart, and I just said, listen, you're all a share of wankers. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't. Um, I just, it was, it was really nice. It really was nice. What is it about Mrs. Brown that people have warmed to so much? I don't know, but, you know, a lot of people ask me about that and say, what's the secret of Mrs. Brown? And I don't know if there is any secret about Mrs. Brown. I do think that somewhere along the line, comedy took a diversion. It, it broke up into categories. There was student comedy, and then it was kind of middle-class comedy. Yeah. It broke up into different segments. And there wasn't that kind of uh, broad, dad's army style comedy. And, and I think you that's that it. So that everyone could laugh at and enjoy it. Yeah, yeah, and I think it's just, uh, I often say it's, it's comedy for the audience that comedy just forgot for a while. Yeah, and, yeah, and it's, it's bad. Good, yeah. And, it's, and it's, going, it's going really well. And I don't know, she's a bitch. <laughs> I mean, she's an old cow. <laughs> but she's a lovable little cow. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, she loves her kids. And I also think that she's at an age where she doesn't care what she says. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, you know, I'm, I'm nearly at that age myself. I can't wait. Do you know what I mean? I can't wait. Just get away with murder. Just say whatever you want. No one gives a shit. Like, I used to canvas for... Uh, my my mum was a politician. Uh, so I used to canvass for some of the Labour politicians that came after her and they'd go door to door knocking at doors and you really could see the difference. Like you'd knock at a young couple's door and they'd open the door and you'd talk about the Labour and they'd be listening to you and there'd be all questions and, and then you go to somebody else who's just a little bit older and they're going, yeah, 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 cynical. Yeah. And then you knock at an old person's door and you open the door and they go, fuck off! <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> and they just don't care. And that's, that's kind of Agnes, yeah. you know? What are you doing here in my garden? Yeah. <laughs> How much of the success do you reckon is because it's Irish? Because it's the fact people will laugh more if you say something in an Irish accent, won't it? I think there's a universe, and I'm learning that now. Because, you know, Mrs. Brown's not new. She's 20, it's 20, 20 years, 20 years doing this. And I learned when the Mrs. Brown's books came out and they started to sell around the world. I was getting emails and letters from people who live in Bombay, in Tokyo. Yeah. Who say, this woman lives just down the road, or she you know, reminds me of my gran or my nan. Or... Yeah. And I think there's that universal mummy. Yeah, and I think that's it. it familiar. She comes on this, and people go, oh, this Jonathan Ross at the awards. We were talking backstage, and he said to me, he said, I have to put my hands up. He said, it was two or three episodes before I realised it was a man. Oh, give over. What do you mean? <laughs> 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 so Has it's... anyone ever, when you've been in drag, anyone mistaken yes, you? Yes, it's embarrassing. You are lying. I swear to God, it's embarrassing. It really is embarrassing. People, what? They hang around the theatre with flowers. And, and I, I try, open the door a little bit if they're outside. I, I'm not coming out. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't do that, sorry. <laughs> um, but, you know, the people do, and, the, and, the, yeah. and uh, nobody, everybody's too embarrassed to tell them it's a man. Yeah. They go, would you go to dinner? Would you do this? Would oh. you do that? You know, and the money's right, I'll do anything. <laughs> <laughs> they give you the best night of your life, son. <laughs> <laughs> don't mind me crying, son. Yeah. Make me take it. <laughs> 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 Have you ever used the, the drag in the bedroom to spice things up? No. <laughs> but we often thought about it. No. You know, me and Jen, they're going, who's your mummy, who's your mummy, who's your mummy? <laughs> 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 yeah, put your tights over there beside mine, love. <laughs> <laughs> no, it'll be, it'll, be, it'll be too weird. We can't even kiss. Yeah. We often, I forget I'm in the gear. Um, 
you know, we've had a, a good night in the show, come off, come off stage, and I go over and I say to her, well done, she said, yeah, great show, and I go, oh, no, no, too weird, too weird, too weird. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that is weird. Yeah, she can do it, uh, she, she doesn't, she can live with Mrs. Brown and she can live with Brendan, but when I'm halfway, yeah. when I'm halfway there, when there's no wig and I still have all the bodysuit on, yeah. and I say, she goes, oh, my Jesus, no. Because <laughs> <laughs> um, I've, been, I've been dragging up loads recently, yeah. I was White D for my New Year's Eve spectacular. Oh, my God. Here's White D. <laughs> 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 you think you're going to be pretty? You always think, oh, I always had this dream, like, if I did dress up as drag, I'd be like, oh, what a lovely woman you make. <laughs> no, manta. Lovely <laughs> <laughs> manta. I don't know, there's something kind of attractive about the tits on the knees. <laughs> <laughs> and I was pretty pleased with me Lauren Goodger in Heat magazine this week, you know, Lauren from Towie. Look at these tits. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Half bad. Uh, thank you, babe. Well, that's that's, that's quite attractive. Yeah. You know, good yeah. to me head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> good <laughs> to me head. <laughs> now, Mrs. Brown's boys. It's back. It's on Christmas Day, isn't it? Yeah. The Christmas special has got one on Christmas Day at, at five past ten mm -hmm. after EastEnders, and uh, one on New Year's Day at nine thirty. Oh, so you're <clears> actually <throat> up against Chatty Man. Oh, you're kidding the me. The Christmas special, yeah. What, 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 Bring what? it on. <laughs> <laughs> Bring it on, I'm ready for you. Yeah. <laughs> Don't you dare switch over. Don't! Don't you dare! <laughs> well, well, you know, I hope it goes well for you. I'll be in Florida and I won't give a fuck. Yeah. <laughs> I hope you get millions of listeners. <laughs> but viewers, viewers. Listen, listen. This stuff is shit strong. Yeah, I know, look, you're it. Well, let's have a look at an exclusive clip. This is Mrs Brown in action in the brilliant Mrs Brown's Boys Christmas special. What are you watching? Strictly the results show. <laughs> I'd love to do that. <laughs> Don't be ridiculous, Katie. You'd be like a giraffe on ice. <laughs> you probably get voted out the second week. <laughs> <laughs> I, have to, uh, I have to put that in context in that we recorded that um, Thursday after she got voted out the second week. So she wasn't expecting me to say that. She was expecting me to, I just said, I, all I said, all I want you to do is come down and go, I'd love to do that. And your mother would go, you'll be marvellous. Yeah. But I didn't say that, of course. I said, don't be ridiculous. <laughs> uh, and How did she find it, though, Strictly? Because you meet people who go on Strictly, they work them to death. It they, was... just, they are knackered. You say, oh, what's up with you? Been on Strictly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is, it is really, help. really tough. But, you know, I mean, it's, it's the final um, next week. Is it, when is the final? Well, no, but it's the final shortly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, the four couples that are left must be absolutely exhausted. Oh, because Jenny only did four weeks. But in the four weeks, she was just, it's seven days a week, 24 hours a day, yeah. and you're not talking about it, you're texting about it, you're texting about it, you're thinking about it, you're looking at the videos back to yeah. get your steps right, and you're still going out, and Greg, Craig is telling you your crap. So it's, it's, it's tough, it's competitive, it's more competitive than, than, it, than it looks. Was you worried about the curse of Strictly? No. Why no. Because there's a lot of that going on, isn't there? <laughs> Maybe that's why she's coming home tired. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, we weren't worried about this. And I think, I think that the strict, of course, is probably a, 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 it's, I think it's a myth, you know. Yeah. Yeah, the way I looked at it was, when we, talk, we talked about it beforehand, if your marriage is okay and everything's okay, there's no room for anybody else anyway, so oh, well, you should be fine. Put, well put. We're getting divorced on Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have to take a break there, love. <laughs> Join us again in a couple of minutes when I'll be chatting some more with Brendan and Tom O'Dell will be performing. See you in part four. <laughs> For part four, Tom O'Dell will be performing shortly. But look who's still here. It's only Brendan O'Bloom and Carol. <laughs> now, do you want a top up? Yes. Come on, it's Black Eye Friday. I'll Get that you. down, you love. I'm Come on, on my way. I'm on Ooh, my way. I'm we'll halfway there. we be having a there. fight and a kebab, won't we, by the end of this? Yeah, <laughs> bring it on, bring it on. Now, all, earlier on, we were talking about Mrs Brown's Boy's Christmas special. Yes. Now, there's been rumours in the press that this is it for Mrs Brown. Oh. Oh. Are you going to jack it in? You must be kidding. Yeah. Where, where's that come from? Are you saying newspapers lie? I don't need to necessarily lie. I think they might just misprint. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I think in the case... No, what it was was Danny, my son Danny, was doing a charity uh, function up in Donegal. 
and one of the newspapers called him about the celebrities that were attending it, etc. And uh, during it, they said, so what's this, how's things going with Mrs. Brown? Yeah. And he said, oh, we're finished with Mrs. Brown. And oh. they went, oh, right, oh, okay. So they ran with the story that Mrs. Brown was over. But actually, what he meant was we just finished the Christmas specials. <laughs> yeah. So, he, yeah. And so they, they ran with that. But it's 30 phone calls later from different newspapers and this BBC shitting themselves, etc. Um, <laughs> it, it was panic stations. But yeah, I said, yeah, that's the kind of guy I am, you know? I work for years and years and years with Mrs. Brown, and then as soon as it takes off, I stop. <laughs> <laughs> so no, there's no, yeah. it, it's no, I'm going to milk this widow dry. <laughs> Now, uh, Christmas is upon us. What are you going to do for Christmas? Are you excited? Do you like it? I love Christmas. Uh, I'm from a family of 11 kids, and Christmas with 11 kids in the house was always very magical. And I, I grew up with this thing about Christmas. My mother probably instilled it as in it. In a, you know, even when it's getting close to Christmas and things are tough, um, it's, we're still going to have a Christmas. Christmas is still coming. It'll still be nice. So I've always believed Christmas is magical. I had one memorable, magical Christmas. There was a toy called the Johnny Seven. Older members of the audience might remember it. It was a gun. And I went, every Santa Claus I met, I asked for Johnny Seven. And when Christmas morning came, uh, went downstairs, and there were two pistols and a set up pair of holsters. No Johnny Seven. Oh. So I went down the road, and all the guys, all the kids had Johnny Sevens. But just as we went back to school, and there would have been a building on fire. So this is about five days after Christmas. And I went to poke around, there's firemen all around it, and the fire was out and it was just rubble. And there was a pallet of Johnny Sevens. Half of them were burnt, but some of the bottom were, were okay. Yeah. And I'm standing looking at these, and the fireman, uh, the fire chief came over and he gave me a, he said, help yourself, son. Oh. And I went and I took one and I brought, I didn't even go to school, I went straight home with it and I had me Johnny Seven. Well, amazingly, 50 years later, my father-in-law, who was a fur chief, told that story about a kid who he told, take a Johnny Seven. No. I ended up marrying his daughter. Oh. <laughs> That's a magic story! It's magic, it's magic. The magic of Christmas. There you go. So if you ask me, is Christmas yeah. magical? Yes, well, it is magical. I thought I was getting a Johnny Seven, and I ended up getting the best thing that ever happened to me in my life. And it was me oh. who burnt that house down. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on. It's been a joy. Oh, it has. Give it up for Brendan O'Carroll, everyone. <laughs> and that's it for tonight's show. A massive thank you to Greg Davies, Gemma Arthur, and of course, Brendan O'Carroll. <laughs> Don't miss the Chatty Man Christmas special at 9 o'clock on Christmas Day when I'll be joined by Sarah Millican, Sir Terry Wogan, Dan Stevens, Sam Smith. Emma Willis, Philip Stoffel, Gina DeCampo, George Ezra, and Mac Busted. Yeah. And if that's still not enough, Alan Carr, for you, then don't forget my New Year's Eve spectacular when I'll be seeing in 2015 with James Corden, Jonathan Ross, Alicia Dixon, Talisa, Caroline Flack, Sean Walsh, Professor Green, and a host of other famous faces. But now, have I got an early Christmas present for you? Performing Real Love, it's Tom O'Dell! <laughs> Like some forgotten dream Seems like all I really was doing Was waiting for you Just like little girls and boys Playing with their little toys Seems like all we really were doing Was waiting for love 